So welcome to the latest edition of the uh, Great Grantham News. Today I'm interviewing the Chief Executive of our local District Council, South and Stephen, Karen Bradford. Uh, Karen, um, four years ago we first met, it was in March 2020, um, I was introduced to you at the, uh, literally just joined SKDC, and it was at the, at the Bourne Corn Exchange, and uh, I think uh, uh, Roy Under was, was presenting, and, and Kenan Cook, who I, who I know, introduced me to you, and of course, a week or two later, March 2020, we all went into lockdown, so a baptism of fire, really. So how's the last four years been? I think, yeah, it's definitely... Good morning, anyway, Howard. Uh, I felt it was definitely a baptism of fire. I'd been in the job uh, just under 20 days, and, of course, we went... Covid hit, the pandemic hit, and, of course, we're all working at home, and uh, I didn't know many of the people that was working wor working with, yeah. and um, and everybody was home working. So to, to take an organisation to then work from home completely, hundred percent, but still delivering some of our services was was a tough call to start with. Yeah. Um, four years on, uh, fab fabulous workforce. Um, we're delivering great services, and um, yeah, of course we've moved house as well. You could say we've yes. moved from the civic building to above the cinema. And um, yeah, you know everything's going really well. I'm four years in and still enjoying it. Cool. And how is how is the new building? How's the new premises above the cinema? It, it's absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Uh, it's all open plan working. We have over a hundred staff into that building every day. But we have to also remember we've got the depot and uh, and a couple of other sites around. So we've got um, at least. Um, 250 to 300 staff in every day. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so, you know, we've got our waste services, Sorry. we've got our grounds maintenance services, we've got our housing services, and they're all mainly in the office. Yeah. Um, so it's going really well, and one of the things we'd seen prior to COVID and through COVID, there was a lot of silo working because people kind of co collated into their teams. Um, working in an open plan office, uh, it's broken down quite a lot of those barriers. Yeah. So somebody from environmental health could be sitting next to HR or an HR officer could be sitting next to somebody from revenues and benefits. Yeah. So it's really brought the team together. Um, it's great facilities. Uh, the staff seem happy with where they are and Good. the these infrastructure that's around them. So yeah, and it's nice to get in there as well and, and speak to the team. Yeah, we've got an open plan office here. It's, 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 it is it is quite a good environment and also a more creative environment, I think, because you. You do bounce off each other and share ideas and That's things. That's it. So. It's about that conversation, isn't yeah. it? And of course, we all go on to teams, don't we? We have teams meetings yes. and yeah. things like that. Um, but it's it, it, it's very two dimensional, isn't it? But you know, when you can have a cup of tea with somebody, or or sit talking to somebody, or bounce ideas, or talk to somebody about a problem that you're dealing with, uh, yeah. and you know what kind of solutions are there out there, and somebody may have those additional experiences. So yeah, no, it's working fabulous. So this might sound a daft question, um, but um, what what is what are the key responsibilities of a chief executive officer of a, of a local authority? What's the chief responsibilities? Well, well, some some of the key things that you get involved with. Well, delivering over hundred services every day. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but mine is very much strategic leadership. So making sure the right resources are in the right place. Uh, budgets have been sensibly managed. So uh, we have some big budgets, as you're aware. Um, yeah. Having those relationships with our elected members is key as well. We've got 56 elected members. Uh, we've got a new administration that took over in May 2023. Um, and making sure that we have those positive working relationships between officers and elected members. Um, I represent South Key Stephen on a number of boards nationally. So making sure that South Key Stephen's on the map. Um, you know, hosting different businesses, we're going out talking to businesses. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, there's lots to do. I was in Warwick last week supporting Vaculug um, in yes. one of their sustainability workshops. So it's great if I can get out of the office. Uh, but you know, leadership is going to be key with any with any role you're chief yeah. set, setting that right culture, that that right approach, uh, making sure I'm listening to the trade unions, listening to the staff doing the inductions, meeting people, so it is pretty varied. That yeah, sounds um, fantastic, yeah. And keeping us out of prison and out of court, of course, <laughs> is very important too. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you talked a lot about business there as well. Um, last week I interviewed um, uh, the founders of a new business in Grantham called HB Creative Solutions. They, they started up in Grantham about two months ago and I asked them what are your experience of setting up in Grantham and it's actually generally pretty positive. But as, as far as the um, the rather district of South Coast Stephen, what would you say to potential existing businesses think about relocating or opening in South Coast Stephen or people setting up? What, what would you say to encourage people or what the benefits of opening up in the district? 
Well, we're here as a district council to support. Yeah. Uh, we've, uh, we've always had the mantra about open for business. Uh, I've got a fabulous economic development team uh, with, who's headed up by Nick Hibbard at the moment, who's, okay. um, who's joined us. Um, so he's been with us for a few months. Um, so yeah, we've got a great team of support there. Uh, not only the support that we can offer, we can also offer those networking opportunities. So, mm -hmm. you know, we all know businesses learn from other businesses, don't they? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, and those business breakfasts are important and getting businesses together. Um, and being there when the business needs our support and help as well. Um, I know we work with yourselves at Recruit Me. Yes. Um, you know, we've, we've all got an important role. Uh, but being there to support that local business, uh, supporting with them accessing funding, uh, giving them advice if we, if we can do, if that advice is, is useful. So yeah, we, we do lots really. Um, always open for conversation around inward investment. Um, you know, we're all dealing with a number of people that are looking to come and build and invest in, in our district. So that's right across the district. Okay. And of course, we're a business owner ourselves. Yeah, we have to you know, work as a business. You know, we're doing a number of developments ourselves. We, we dispose of some assets ourselves. So, you know, to support local businesses. Um, and, you know, we employ a lot of local businesses as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you think multi-million pounds housing service and how many contractors we have working at any one time with that, it's over 50 contractors. So, you know, big business, big, big, you know, big works to, to be undertaken. Thank you. Um, so, South to Stephen District Council and Recruit Me, we both sit on the Linkshire Armed Forces Covenant Partnership Board. In fact, the next one's on the 1st of May at the Prince William Barracks. Uh, it's chaired by a councillor, I've got his name right, Richard Dixon Warren. That's right. Um, and, and I know um, your district councillors go to that, and, and, and Debbie Rogers is your the Armed Forces person as well. Um, do, does the council employ many people for the Armed Forces community? And Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, and I'm really, really proud of what Debbie and Richard and everything does to support the Covenant. Yeah. You know, we were the first district council in Lincolnshire to get the Gold Award. Yes, congratulations uh, on that. Yeah, I saw no, that. Yeah, we've, we've, we've got that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know I'm pleased, but as a district council, we were very proud. And when we went yeah. across to Staffordshire to pick up the award, it was a, a very proud, proud evening. Um, and I know Richard's chairing the, the Covenant board um, uh, and having a super impact. And what Richard brings to that as our champion for... Uh, for the armed forces is excellent. Debbie is a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. As we know, <laughs> uh, her and Carol together, you know, they, there's nothing really stopping them, to be honest. Yeah. And, you know, they've all organised with the Barretts the, the business evenings and yes. how, we, how we support um, uh, the armed forces. So, yeah, we do do a lot of recruitment, um, positive recruitment to, of people coming out of the out of the forces, uh, for whatever reason they're coming out of the forces as well. Yeah. Either retirement or dis making that decision that they don't want to do another term. Um, so, yeah, the team uh, do work with this, you know, yourself uh, and others to, to encourage people to come and work for us. Really. As far as people coming out of the forces or relocating, and the wider population, considering of moving to Grantham or I should say South Stephen District Council, um, for families and things, think of moving to the district. What are some of the benefits of, 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 of a district to live in? What are the, I, I think I mean, first thing I think of many. I, I moved up here for for links to. I worked in London at the time, so commuting from South Stephen to London an hour. I saw the other links as well. So that was one of the reasons I came up here. Plus, obviously local schools and things like that, I'm sure that's there's a lot right. more as well. That's right, the education offer is excellent, we, yeah. we, we, can't, we can't forget that, that's right across the district, you know, um, uh, the excellent services for, for Grants and for Bournes, for Stamford, I know Market Deacon have their challenges at the present time, but you know, the education offer is excellent. Um, you know, you've got to think that we have got a thriving town, uh, and there's a lot of people struggling with their town centres. Yeah. We have got a thriving town centre. We have got some thriving businesses, lots of businesses uh, operating in the area. We've got some great green lungs, of this, it's certainly in Grantham, haven't we? We've got our three parks. Yes. They're yeah. all of uh, national standard, green flag standard, which is just shows the quality of, of infrastructure there. Um, you know, we're, we're very close to the A1. We're very close on the East Coast Main Line. Yeah. We've got good infrastructure getting us around around the town. Uh, always have more uh, I, I do I hear that uh, we're potentially having some more bus services which will be great okay, to help, uh, help and support uh, get us around um, we've got great leisure facilities uh, play parks 
housing is of good quality and let's be honest if you've lived in London and you're coming to Grantham mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a, a reasonable price uh, yeah. uh, housing of course it goes up significantly if you go to the south of the district with Stamford mm -hmm. uh, being the fourth best place to live in the country uh, that is reflected in the house pricing as well good choice so <laughs> uh, fabulous choice and, and, and very much a, a thriving town as well so lots to do um, Let's not forget our arts and culture offer. Uh, we're nice and safe. We've got a safe towns. Uh, we've got good CCTV, keeping keeping an eye on things to make sure I'm working closely with the police. So there's lots of benefits to come here. Um, so, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I've li lived in the area for almost 15 years now. So, uh, yeah, certainly lots, lots going on. Yes. So, I mean, as far as the population of, across South Cassie District, is, is it a growing population? You find it is, is, it is uh, obviously... Is, plenty of housing developments around the area and, and new villages being built and things. Yeah, we're growing year on year. Yeah. Uh, the last census documentations that came out that we, I think we were up about 7%. We weren't the biggest growth area in Lincolnshire, okay. but Lincolnshire as a whole is growing, population is growing. And, um, you know, predictions are that we'll continue to grow. Um, unemployment levels are low, uh, but we do know that we've got pockets that we need to work with uh, to make sure that there, there isn't that worklessness mm. culture. Um, which the team are fully aware of and we've got some projects ongoing to to help and address those yeah. but low unemployment good housing you know great cultural offer you know I, I think it's a great place to come and live South East Stephen across the board yeah certainly certainly for employment I, I've been on a recruitment company I do, do notice that it is yeah it is, it is difficult to, to recruit the grants at times because it's for employment which is putting on a positive thing though obviously I think we're down with the employment levels at about two percent at yeah. the moment aren't we uh, but um, yeah that quality of of, um, of of offer that is needs to be there and I think we you know we need to make sure that as recruiters you as a recruiter as, as a recruiter mm -hmm. you know with, we're offering that holistic service as well it's not you need to have <coughs> the skills to come and do the job yeah there needs to be that on online training that supportive culture it is yeah that's really going to be important you know that old analogy you know we've all been in business many years that you know about grow your own and train your own and yeah. it is critical these days yeah, it is really important i mean it's um i said so part of our role as a group company as well is to you know re-educate re businesses and organizations as well because um a lot of businesses are some some of them more set in the ways than others and of course the whole face of employment and has changed over the last couple of years whether that be hybrid or, or home working as well and also part of our role is to it's about sort of this South Coast is a great place to live and work and it's a, an option that again with full employment that companies always consider you know encourage people to move to the area you know whether it's the good you know transport links education that type of things as well and I think that's seeing a more of a growing trend in that as well which hybrid work and allows as well because obviously you can get people coming into the area as well again, which again brings new skills to the area. It, it, it does but uh, I, I really uh, I'm a big advocate I mean we, we struggle or we have struggled to employ planners to environmental health officers yeah. building control officers you know there was a whole area of where we were struggling to recruit you know we've got 23 apprenticeships uh, going oh, wow. on now. Okay, cool. um, we've got trainee posts, we've got graduate posts, so that grow your own and making sure that um, that you've got that succession planning yeah. coming through is, is critical for all companies, I'm sure, uh, but certainly in some of the key areas where we're struggling with. But you know, now um, uh, we've got an advert out at the moment for building control, okay. uh, building control trainees and officers, uh, but we're fully, fully staffed in planning and environmental health, which, you know, when I speak to my colleagues around the country, chief execs, you know, they're, they're struggling in those areas, uh, but because of the quality that we offer, we, we are a great team, we're a good employer, yeah. then, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I'm pleased that we're in a positive place that we're in. Well, you're going to college here, obviously they've got a sort of yeah. construction, that type of thing as well. I mean. Uh, you employ around five hundred people. Yeah, we do. The, the, what are if you're pitching now the some benefits of working for SKDC? What would you, what are you, what do you what do you say? Um, I think that positive leadership mm -hmm. uh, is is always going to be important, but the benefits packets that come into work with it is a positive culture, a supportive culture. Um, you've got all the positives of the area, but actually the organisation um, we have good strong training plans, good inductions. Um, We've got a supportive culture if there is issues within your life, so whatever that may be. So we're a very mm. supportive employer. We have a sickness benefit package. We've got a good holiday package. Um, you know, the benefits are really quite wide, but I think people these days are looking for that flexible working, uh, which we do offer. Yeah. Um, 
and a supportive package of training, career development, and, and that's key for people. It is, yeah. Uh, and they're treated with respect, and they're valued, and there's some clear values that we that we hold our staff against. So, you know, for me, that's really important. Yeah, we, we employ everything from baby boomers to the chat behind the camera, Devon, Gen Z, and I think you have to be have to be really yeah. open-minded these days, you apart from the whole diversity inclusion piece. Um, yeah, we're, we're, so. we're a device employer ourselves, but it's, yeah, it is understanding what makes a baby boomer tick to what makes a Gen Z tick and everything in between. It is, it is. And we, we, get, we adopted a new people strategy. I know you've met with Fran, our fabulous yes. head of HR. Uh, we, we had a new people strategy launched two years ago and we're delivering against mm-hmm. those, those, those things that we said that we'd do, you know, new key values, you know, supported culture, good training plans, you know, EDI at the centre of what we, what we do. And uh, it's really important. We have a staff panel as well, but where we've got new policies and they'll talk through. We have a good, va- uh, valued relationship with the trade unions, okay. uh, where I meet personally and Fran every, every month, and you know, with two trade union representatives, and that's about positive working relationships, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And how we move things forward together, and it's not us doing it to you. Uh, and I think that's how the culture has changed, uh, certainly over the last four years when I've been around. Fantastic. Oh, you mentioned earlier um, off camera about um, a bit of the news about the new Grantham Council um, and you mentioned the elections coming up. What, what, you know, what, what, what's happening with that then? Obviously, a lot, a lot of interest in that. Yeah, there is. I mean, we've got the Police and Crime Commissioner elections. Okay. Uh, probably the timing that this goes out will have taken place on the 2nd of May. Uh, and then there's 22 seats up for the new Grantham. Uh, we call it a parish council, but okay. then, and I'm sure... When, once those 22 members are elected, they will choose to change it to a town council. <laughs> but in legislation terms, yeah. it's a parish council. Um, so we've got 22 seats up for election, uh, for the new election on, on the 2nd of May. And it's about that working relationship. And, you know, we've got the Grantham trustees now, of course, they will, they will be um, disbanded. And then that's, of course, the Grantham, oh, okay. yeah, the Grantham okay. parish council will take over. So the first week when members are elected, uh, they'll meet with myself and my monitoring officer, uh, Graham Watts, and we'll sit down and talk to them about the governance, about setting up a new parish council, um, the precepting, of course, uh, and what's their aspirations that they want to do for the town. And then we'll we'll look to work with them to help. And you play a key role in that by the sound of it, yeah? Yeah, we, we um, the first meetings are with myself, of okay. course, because there, there isn't any other appointed... Um, officer at the time so it's me that, that kind of steps into that space uh, but I'm sure with the individuals that will get elected on on the, on the 2nd of May uh, and early into the th- morning of the 3rd of May when we're still counting and, and announcing that uh, they'll have that drive that ambition mm. for Grantham that they want to see something for Grantham even more happening over and above future high streets investments local yeah. investments you know, it's amazing what, you know, just uh, just think, we were talking off camera as well about the Angel and Royal, you know, yes. the investment that you see local businesses making and, and driving into the town is, is, is absolutely great to see. Yeah, so we're, obviously we're, we're <coughs> talking now just off the marketplace in Grantham, you obviously got the new wine bar being renovated next door, we've got the, the Odison Bakery opening this spring, hopefully, and, and then next year Westgate 1852, yeah, down the corner, a yeah. huge restaurant, so there's yeah. certainly going to be a lot of... A, a sort of destination points for Grantham, which would be fantastic, and I can see as well some of the high street developments, the new chemist just across the road, the new frontage yeah. just been un- unveiled. It looks awesome. Yeah, it looks loads better, doesn't it? It, it know, does. I yeah. Past that this morning, and yeah, um, yeah and our shop front scheme uh, that we've been investing and in, supported by English Heritage to do that with funding coming in to then support these businesses, and another twenty three housing units as well. Oh, we've opened okay. up shops as well that we, we've supported. So. We give a contribution, a grant towards them to to you know stop that dead space and utilise it more for accommodation. So yeah, no, the the improvements in shop fronts is fantastic, and you see it walking down Westgate as well, don't you? Yes, and, you do. Yeah. Um, and seeing so the High Street Westgate, um, the County Council will be investing more money and and looking at the roads around Grantham. So there'll be another few million pounds spent on that over this next year and then we've got some more money to look at to see what other investment that we want to do and working with local people so yeah, that's my last question really for the next over the next couple of years what's what excites you what, is, what are you looking forward to or, 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 can, you, can, can, can you tell us or is that um <laughs> yes i mean we've just adopted a new corporate plan um, and yeah. as it went through council in um in in, in february time 
So lots to be delivered. Um, St Martin's Park in in Stamford, uh, new yeah, school it, forward, yeah, it, yeah. housing, re- residential, employment, uh, and retire- new retirement village. We've got some big developments planning wise on on the books at the moment. So hopefully that they they they're off the books and they're starting to be delivered. Um, inward investment. I'm going down to meet the new managing director of uh, downtown in the next couple of weeks. Oh, okay, good. Um, uh, meeting him, and um, yeah, there's a lot to do. The corporate plan very much talks about um, our five key priorities, um, and I won't go through those now. But it's really important that we st- we have a strong vision for what we want to do and how we want to support our communities, yeah. how we want to support sustainability. Um, and how we need to deliver uh, for local people as well with our services. We've got food waste collection coming along in 2026. We've got a new depot depot being built to make sure that we've got enough space for vehicles. Um, So yeah, there's lots to do uh, and lots of investments to make. Um, So it's quite an exciting time, I think, so uh, certainly over the next few years. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Karen, very much. Thank Anything else you have to say or so, though? No, thank you very much. And I'm, you know, I'm really pleased that you invited me along today and uh, we can have this chat. Thank you. That's Thank you for Karen Bradford, Chief Executive of South Consumer District Council. Uh, we'll post this video in due course and with all the various social media links as well. So thank you, Karen. Thank you, Howard. Nice to meet you. Lovely. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.